Well, y'all, the 2021 MLB draft is coming up sooner than you think. It's actually two months from today, exactly. July 11th is when it starts, and the Rangers have the number two pick. So in the past, I've usually not covered MLB draft stuff just because the Rangers have not had a pick worth talking about per se, but number two overall is a big deal, and while they're not guaranteed to do well, it is typically a good thing to pick someone (laughs) that high up. So if you've been following it at all, which I've kind of started to recently, and I've got a couple pages here that I want to talk about, it seems that either Kumar Rocker or Jack Leiter will be the number one pick right now. This is the MLB.com mock draft posted April 25th by Jonathan Mayo. And he has Jack Leiter going first, which I would probably agree with. I mean, the guy threw a no-hitter striking out 16 batters earlier this season against South Carolina. Big-time SEC matchup. And the only batter that he walked in that game was actually the first one of the game on a 3-2 count. So, nearly a perfecto. I mean, the dude was absolutely dealing. We'll go into his stats and Kumar's stats in a bit. But that's who they have going number one. And then number two, they currently have Jordan Lawler. I think I'm saying that right. Who currently attends Jesuit Prep, which is a high school. Actually, he's just 18 years old. And I don't remember the last time a player that young went that high in the draft. I know that Derek Jeter was picked out of high school pretty high up and guys like that, but I don't know anyone super recently at least who has gotten to the big leagues yet so I I don't know I don't keep up with other teams farms all that much but he seems to be the top prep player and is committed to Vanderbilt as well so really top three players are directly or indirectly coming from Vanderbilt you can see that in the past two drafts Rangers have picked someone from college but in terms of a bat it doesn't seem to work out here this year and also as I say that there's a couple other people coming from high school who are short stops as well so I don't know I don't know a lot about drafting but this year I have been trying to pay a little more attention to it but anyway at number three you got Kumar Rocker also out of Vanderbilt absolutely dominating the SEC so let's get into each of these players real quick first we'll start off with Mr. Kumar Rocker. You can see this year, his first year was very solid. 22 games played, 16 started, had a complete game that year, almost 100 innings, which is quite a bit for college. And then, of course, the COVID shortened season. He was off to an amazing start. Three games started, five total pitched, 1.8 ERA, which I find it kind of weird how he's not starting, or wasn't at least starting every game when they knew he was good enough to do so but I don't know it could be a developmental thing but this year he has started every game to the tune of an 11 and 1 record with a 2.3 ERA Vanderbilt currently ranked number two in the country below Arkansas and here as well he does have 110 strikeouts to 24 walks so that's a pretty good ratio in 292 batters total only allowed just the four home runs on the season So that was Kumar Rocker's numbers there. He is very good. Can't go wrong with picking him. And then we've got Mr. Jack Leiter, son of MLB player Al. I think he's a Hall of Famer. I can't remember, though. But his numbers are just as insane on the season. 7-2 record, 2.1 ERA, 11 games started. He has that one complete game. That was the no-hitter. 100 and... Six strikeouts to 29 walks. Another very, very good choice. So those are those two guys. I mean, not much of a question on either of them. I was just personally a bit confused why Texas would pick a shortstop, especially with the number two overall pick when it seems like the issue has always been pitching for them. And, I mean, you can't go wrong with picking pitching for any team. But... Specifically, the Rangers, as we all know, have had 
their pitching woes and they can't seem to quite develop pitching always. So getting someone like Jack or Kumar would be a good boost, I think. And this was an article from today. It looks like it was updated very recently about Jordan Lawler being the Pirates pick, actually, and Jack or Kumar falling to two and three, which I would also be okay with. It just seems like a weird fit for the Rangers right now. They have a decent amount of shortstop options, I believe. You know, they were holding on to Elvis for a while and finally got rid of him there, which did suck to see, but y'all have seen my video on that. I'll link it below if you want to hear more about what I thought of that trade initially. And this was a list I forgot to pull up as well. These are the Rangers' top 10 prospects, which is part of my point here. They have Maximo at 4, who is a shortstop, who is also 18. They have Luis Angel Acuna, which is Ronald Acuna's brother. He's a shortstop slash second baseman, just 19. And then Anderson Tejeda, which we got to look at him this year. And he is also a shortstop. I'm going to go to the, the full list here. So a couple of outfielders and pitchers and then another shortstop. And that's really about it for the top 30. But what was that? Let's see. One, two, three, four. So four out of the top 30 are shortstops. Actually, okay, there's a first baseman. I was like, I don't even see a, <laughs> a first baseman on there. I do know that the Rangers love to get outfielders. So that, I agree, they don't need to get any more of that. But yeah, they do have a few shortstops in their top 10 alone. And then, as well as Chris down here. So that's just me personally. I'm not a scout, draft expert, anything like that. But anyway, uh, Nicholas here goes into more detail about their thought process. That he is the best prospect at the moment according to Kylie McDaniel of ESPN. And once again, the reality is that you can't go wrong with any of these guys. That is just my personal opinion that I think they should go with one of the Vanderbilt guys, but I haven't even shown you all his numbers yet. We're talking about all this stuff you gotta see his numbers so 2019 as a sophomore 409 with five home runs 2020 of course shortened season hit 485 with a home run and 13 rbi in 12 games pretty good stuff and then in the past summer he was the perfect game player of the year and then committed to vanderbilt so not a bad run for Jordan there and these are some of his stats obviously since Jesuit is a high school they have they don't have all the same statistics tracking but you can see he's had a three hit game and these are season highs so I'm sure he's done these multiple times some pretty good stuff here and let's see his most recent game so May 8th hits and at bats are there okay so zero for zero with a run scored and I'm guessing he walked walked twice so Hitting 424 <laughs> currently. Obviously, he started off pretty hot and then went down a little bit and then went back up, but still it was his lowest batting average. Let's see if we can sort it. I can't, but his lowest was the low 300s, which is insane. So that 44 hits on the season, that's runs. 44 runs scored, 39 hits out of 92 at bats. That's insane. His fielding percentage is 945. That's pretty good as well. Here's what I was looking for. I didn't even see this. Four home runs, 31 driven in, hitting 425 with a 552 on base. I guess his fielding is actually 965 this year, so that's even better. I don't see it being a problem if Texas picks him. I just didn't think that they need a shortstop at the moment and of course you pick someone out of high school it will take a few more years to get them up there as opposed to if you pick someone out of college that's kind of the idea of going to college but if you're getting talked about being one or two in the draft 
out of high school, you got to take that chance. Well, that's really all I got for y'all today. Let me know what you think about my opinions here, who you think is going to go number one in the draft, who you think the Rangers will get. And like I said, just want to say it one more time, there's nothing wrong with picking any of these three people. That was just my opinion. So not any hate to any of these guys. They're all very, very talented, and I'm sure each of them will have incredible careers. So they it's been done before by plenty of college players getting picked in the top five happens all the time where they do amazing with all that being said i will talk to y'all later